Hi, and welcome to the Hyperduino and MakerBit workshop. I'm Chris Torrance. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do block programming with your MakerBit. So, let's get started. To follow along in today's lessons, you'll need a few things. The first thing you'll need is the MakerBit kit. Your MakerBit may come in either two different colors, white or black. It doesn't matter which one you use. You'll also need the micro bit from your kit. You'll need the cable to connect the micro bit and the maker bit to your computer. You'll need a laptop, either a Windows, Mac, or Chromebook. And then finally, you'll need the supplies from the Volcano kit. So the Volcano kit itself. And then finally, you'll need the LED harnesses. You can use either red or blue, it doesn't matter. You'll need two of them. And then you'll also need the touch point harness as well as the little touch point pins. Let's go ahead and assemble everything. First thing I want to do is plug the micro bit into the maker bit itself and make sure to do this with the LEDs side up. And then I'll plug in my power. So there's two different power cables. One goes into the maker bit for the main voltage and then the other little USB one plugs into the micro bit. And then the end, other end of the cable is a USB which will go into your computer. Now we'll plug in our LEDs and touch points. Rather than use the Volcano Kit, I've gone ahead and just built this simple little harness here. You don't need to do this. This will just make it easy for me to demonstrate. So let me go ahead and I'll close this up. And I'll plug in my touch points first. And then I'll plug in my LEDs. So this is my first set of LEDs. So this is pins 5 through 10. And then I'll plug in my second set of LEDs, and this is 11 through 16. And now we're ready to hook it up to the computer. To get started, navigate to makecode.makerbit.com in your web browser. When you get there, you'll be presented with the block interface. On the left-hand side, we have a simulation of what will happen in the micro bit. In the middle are all the different blocks we can use, and on the right-hand side is our programming area. If we take a look at this, we'll already have a program here that's running, which starts up the micro bit, draws an image on the screen in the shape of a letter M, and then turns off the micro bit's LED display, as well as turning off all of the other LED pins. We don't actually need the simulator for this, so we'll just go ahead and we're gonna collapse that now. And that'll give us a little bit more room. We're interested primarily in the blocks in the maker bit section here, which is a custom section that's been added to make code. And if we scroll down in there, there's several different categories, including the ultrasonic sensor, an infrared remote, an LCD display, MP3 player, motors, pins, and then finally touch. Let's go ahead and we'll do a really simple program. What we want to do is we want to make LED5 over here blink on and off. There's two different places we can put blocks. There's the on start section, which only happens once when the maker bit is plugged in. And then there's the forever section and anything in here happens repeatedly. So let's go ahead now, we'll expand the maker bit block section, go down to pins, and we're gonna drag in this set digital pin five to high. And then we're actually gonna want two of those. So we're gonna drag it in again. And we're gonna stick those into the forever block. And we're gonna turn on pin five or LED five to high, and then we're gonna turn it back to low. So this would be on and then off. However, if we just ran this now, it would just turn on and off so fast that we wouldn't actually be able to see it. So let's go back over to the basic block section here, and we're gonna put in a pause. And again, we're gonna need two of these. So I'll go ahead and drag two in. We'll put one after turning the LED on and another one after turning it off. And we'll set both of them to one second. And you can see that it automatically changed it to 1000 milliseconds because that's equivalent to one second. Let's go ahead and we'll try out our program now. To do that, I'm gonna click on the download button. That actually downloaded the file to my computer. If you're on a Chromebook, you can click on the show in folder button on the download manager and it'll actually take you to where the program was downloaded. If you're on Mac or Windows, you'll have to go to your downloads folder to find the file. So let's do that now. I'm gonna click on the finder here on my Mac and here's the file that was downloaded and you can tell it's the correct one because it ends in .hex. On the left hand side in your list of drives you should have one entitled microbit. So if you go ahead and drag the hex file on top of that, that'll automatically load that program onto the maker bit. 
And you can see when I do that, all of the LEDs flash as it's loading the program. And now you can see that the LED is blinking just like we wanted. So a blinking LED is great, but it's not very interactive. Let's go ahead and add some interactivity by using the touch pins. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and we'll go into the Maker Bit tab here and then go down to Touch. And we're going to use this Touch Sensor is Touched block. And we're going to put this into an if statement. So go under Logic on the left hand side and use the if true then else and drag this into your forever block. And now we don't want this to always be true. Instead, we're going to put this if touch sensor is touched in there. And we're going to make sure to select pin 5. And let's just quickly change the pause here down to 500 milliseconds just to make it a little bit faster. Now, when the pin is not touched, we want to turn it off. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this block here and put that in there. So let's go ahead and try this now. So this should say, if that touch pin is touched, then go ahead and blink that LED, otherwise turn it off. And let's see what happens. Okay, so the LED is off, and now if I touch it, you can see that it blinks. Okay, now what if I wanted to do these other LEDs like this and have the same thing happen? Well, in our program, we could just take this entire block here and just reproduce it 11 more times, changing the pins, but that would get really long and complicated. Instead, what we're gonna use is a for loop, and this says do something a certain amount of times and give me a variable that's equal to that number. So we're gonna say for index from five to 16, do something. Now, if we just did this here, all it would do is it would keep checking pin five, but instead we want it to loop through all the pins from five to 16. So we actually need to make use of this index variable. And to do that, I can go over here on the left-hand side, click variables, and there's my index variable. And I can go ahead and I can drag that in here. And we wanna put that in everywhere that we have an LED five. And I can just duplicate it just to make it easier. So one more, and then a third one. And then finally, we need to check the touch pins. Now, when you're replacing the touch pin one, be sure to not select the entire block. You only want to select the inner block where it just has the number. So this looks much better. So for index from 5 to 16, if that touch sensor is touched, then go ahead and blink the LED. Otherwise, turn it off. Let's try out this program. Okay, so the program is all loaded up. So now, if we touch this touch sensor, that LED lights up. Then the next one third, fourth, etc. All right, that's about all we're gonna do for today, but think about other things you could do with this program. For example, what if you wanted it to always stay on when you were holding down the touch sensor? Here, if I hold it down, it just blinks because it's just repeatedly checking over and over again. But what if I wanted to just stay on while that touch sensor was touched? Another thing to try is to play around with these durations here and see what happens when you make them longer or shorter and how does that affect how long the light is on versus off. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of block programming with the MakerBit. There's lots of cool projects that you can do. What will you create?